Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are mighty on behalf of your people, that you arise and defend your cause, that you are a, a man of war and that no one can stand against you. And your word says that no weapon that is fashioned against your people can prosper. Uh, and we ask, Lord Jesus, that as you have saved us through your precious blood shed on the cross of Calvary, as you have died for us and paid the penalty for our sins, so you would keep us by your grace and that you give us uh, mercy, show us your mercy, Lord, and strengthen us and help us in our daily battle against the world and the flesh and the devil. And we ask that you would bless and encourage us through this devotion now. Father, we ask this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Welcome to the Spurgeon's devotional podcast, a Christian podcast desiring to honour the Lord Jesus Christ. Brought to you by David Mackerath. This is the devotion for May the 9th. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Numbers 22 verses 1 to 20. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side Jordan by Jericho. And Balak the son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. Spurgeon says, Yet they ought to have rejoiced, for the Amorites had been their great enemies, and Israel had put them down. But men who are bent on opposing God's servants are under such an infatuation that they know not their own mercies. Verse 4. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us, as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers therefore unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt, behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me, this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I wot that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. Spurgeon says, Moab hated Israel, but did not come to open fighting at first. Many are the underhanded enemies of Israel. But God will defeat their devices. 7. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. And they came unto Balaam and spake unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. God came to Balaam and said, What men are these with thee? Spurs and says probably Balaam was surprised beyond measure that God should actually come to him. He had been a mere magician, but now for a while the true prophetic spirit filled him. Verse 10, And Balaam said unto God, Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, hath sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. Peradventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them, thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Spurgeon says, What an opportunity for Balaam, if he had but been blessed with grace as well as with the prophetic gift. Here the Lord told him of a blessed people. Why did he not cast in his lot with them? Verse 13, And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give you me, give me leave to go with you. Spurgeon comments, So far, so good. Under the pressure of fear, Balaam is obedient, but will he hold on? Scripture continues, And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak, and said, Balaam refuseth to come with us. And Balak sent yet again princes more and more honourable than, than they, and they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus saith Balak, the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me, for I will promote thee unto very great honour, and I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. Spurgeon says, Here are larger bribes, but how will the prophet act now? Verse 18, And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would 
Give me his house full of silver and gold. I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Now therefore I pray you, tarry ye also here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me. And God came unto Balaam that at night, and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shalt thou do. Spurgeon says, He wanted to go, for he loved the wages of unrighteousness, and to try him he has a conditional permit to go if the princes come again and press him, but not else. We shall see in our next reading how his evil heart broke this gentle bond. He was a great man, an enlightened man, and for a while a supernaturally endowed man, but a grain of grace would have been of more value to him than all this, and for lack of it he perished miserably. O oh Lord, give us grace rather than the rarest endowments. Amen. <laughs>